Everyone, welcome back. Now the intro is filmed after the fact for this video because it was too long, so I've actually split it up into two parts. So in this video we will be showing the guard repair, so driver side guard repaired and back on, uh, driver side door skin inner and outer, some floor repairs under there, and an inner and outer lower rear quarter with like all the associated brackets and stuff under there. And then next episode will be front spoiler, rear spoiler, uh, spare wheel well, and various other little knickknacks on the car. It'll be uh, inner door skin for this side, the sill, uh, battery, battery tray repairs, and the uh, horn bracket and stuff, other little things that were missed. So let's go back in time. So that section of the sill replaced. So it's got this little piece to put in now. Alright, so seal's all repaired, move on to something else, probably the inner of this floor now, this part. So just simple shrinker stretcher on a piece of um, normal 90 fold, just to get the floor piece. So unpicked, primed, and I've got my little replacement piece here, so just got to chuck that in, and uh, start welding it in working in darkness at the moment because I don't know where I placed my light. I have checked everywhere, checked every car. I don't know where my little LED light is. I'm thinking I left it under that tub and it's already left or maybe it's in the back of it or something. I caught that early. I was about to start welding it in then I was like, wait a minute, you missed that plug there. So I had to drill that for the front of the floor. I've got this piece just tacked in place and I'm just going to buzz those MIGs off and then TIG it in. It's easier to sand. And uh, I've got this piece cut out, primed. I've got my infill cut and shut ready to go together. And this piece didn't fit in this section because it's a cut from the opposite side and the bead length is actually different. So I had to actually section it and join it all back together. So it's still quicker than making that piece by hand because that's actually a really deep and tapered bead. So it's just a pain in the ass to make that, I'd rather just use an existing one. Okay, so they're tigged in, and I'll get to the underside once I do the um, front little patch when I put it on the hoist, so laying on the ground. Okay, so that patch is done, that one's done, and I'll get to the underside once I put it on the hoist. Hold floor removed, and um, prepped. The new cut. Alrighty, so all floor pans are sorted. I on to the rear lower quarter now, which is going to be a cookie cutter, same as last time. Make the outer, pull that off, make the inners, all the inner wheel, wheel well structure, and uh, then make the inner lower quarter, fit all those. So, here we go. So, lower quarter, same, same as the other side cookie cutter. And I'm just going to do some shrinking on this edge here, just to wrap that around, and it should be golden. Alright, so it's the lower, all made. Just click it on, and um, ready to unpick what's behind it, and sort out this wheel well. I've taken that outer off, and it's got a layer of, like, sealer. It's like, doesn't go hard, just like um, chewing gum stays between this face of the panel so you've got to make it tight on this edge but remember that this edge actually has like a two to three mil gap there for the sealer so the inner is pretty good a few spots up here just little holes but this one maybe just a slight patch just on the outside of it but the whole inner the rest of the inner looks pretty good so it should clean up good it'll just be an outer there thankfully and then just here yeah, this wheel arch here and a section along here The inside again, nothing special. Just paper as my template for the wheel arch. So that tells me all I need to know about it, where I need to shrink, where my edges are to tip, and uh, the overall size of the piece. So I just transferred it to steel. I just draw the line on. I give it a faint bead roll just so it's there forever. I just form it over whatever, form it over your knee, the tire, anything to get it starting to be close. And then I've got to shrink this area here to start wrapping this corner around. So I'll do that now. 
and there's another little detail here that pumps out it's like a good little secondary wheel arch on the inside you'll probably be able to see it from yeah it's like another little detail there so that lets it meet the quarter all right so that's a few passes with the thumbnails just on this area here it's starting to curve it around so now i need to plunge that out to blend that area in and then run the um tipping wheel on this edge again to start tipping that flange so there's no real game plan i just sort of wing it every time and it changes every time so that's the, the side pretty much roughed out and i'm going to pretty much add um this flange in now the whole way and it should wrap it around the rest of the way so all right so that's the replacement just clamped over the top and uh fitting really good it takes stuff all time to make something like that you surprise yourself sometimes some things are really easy like that it was like i started that at quarter past four and it's now 10 to 5 so yeah under an hour and it's basically done ready to cut out and weld in so yeah pretty happy with that for the time it took a little bit of tidying up here and there on there just on some um dents here but I'm not gonna argue with that at all so there's the edge I was talking about on the bottom of the guard there it's stretched it's all bunched up everywhere so I'm gonna go put it in the kick shrinker just get that edge back to straight so I thought sweet the inner isn't bad I've just got a patch here on the edge and a little one in the corner here and then I looked up and it's just pure crust so that's lame I have to remake this I should have known they did see a little bit of pitting here on the floor and this is what it looks like when you get a car blasted and you're like oh it's just a little small hole there the rust has stopped it's been blasted and treated uh -uh. it's always what you can't see Alrighty, so i'm hoping two maybe three piece so I'm make this uh, lower section along here and then probably make this in one uh, that'll just be one there single fold and hopefully get that main area out there so it'll be a join along here try and be a hero and do it in one piece but there's absolutely no need to struggle so to push this radius into it it's not like a real sharp fold it's pretty round just draw it on there and i uh, use this round upper die with a soft lower wheel and just run that through a fair few times and then i'll probably end up chopping it off say 40 50 mil above that and then shape the next piece left it long enough to do both pieces out of this because it's easy to um, manipulate it if you've got something to hang on to if you leave the piece 50 mil short it's really hard to um, uh, form it probably wondering why I go to the effort of replicating this shape here just make it any old shape it's actually got a bracket there that does something so there is a void and a pocket there and a bracket for something so I'm assuming it's like a muffler shield or something like that but that's going to stay how it is original and as I've run this bead onto it I might even try like a, a two-piece style I might just start malleting some shape into this I might be able to get that instead of doing a join across there it might end up just joining the two ends on we'll see how it works I don't really know how it's going to react until you start doing it me five minutes ago don't need to be a hero and make it in one piece next minute here I am making it in one piece sometimes it just works and you can just hammer form it over with like a dolly behind over the original piece sometimes it works like this and you can just rough it out and then pull it off and detail it all up most of the time it doesn't work but sometimes you do get lucky and you can get it out of one piece like this all right so pretty much got it one piece which is pretty surprising to me as well just needs a little bit of tidying up here and there like on these blends and uh, just a bit of hammer marks and stuff to sort out but fitting good so i'll get it clamped in place now and get some uh, reference holes and then i can unpick this one so that's all three layers there fitting good one piece surprisingly a little wheel arch so this inner arch one piece as well and then you've got the quarter wants to line up and one piece as well all right so that's the um inner quarter and the inner wheel arch just cut in place so as you can see fitting good just got to fold up that little piece and um spot that on it 
and I'll have to remake this piece which is the same as the other side it's all rotted underneath so just left that there for its reference at the moment for the jack holder but um, same as the other side yeah it's just got to be remade right so we've got screws here holding it in place it shouldn't be in the way of the quarter I've drilled some holes in that bit of angle so I've got reference points when I remake it spot it back on so I'm just going to get the quarter clear coat on which I'm going to need two hands to do I can't do that one handed so that's the outer lower quarter on there fitting really good happy with that and um, the lips are meeting up nice it's clamping up good everywhere so the only little piece to go on is this uh, little piece I had to cut out just to get the uh, inner lower quarter joint it's spotted there and then I've got um, this piece for the center of the arch as well because it's all rotted, rotted and taken away there so I've made, made extra there so I'll get those joined together and happy days so this is why we unpick things because this creates rusty water that gets trapped under everything else and if we look at this little guy it's a nightmare in there so that ever getting wet again will just trap more rusty water which will track down and do this which will track down into the lower and rot the lower out again so best we get rid of it all now so i've made the piece that goes on here put that aside for now and i'm going to make this little angle so just be a matter of replicating it by putting this piece here saying okay cool it needs to be shrunk here to get that curve so stretch this area whole way around and I don't think it's dead flat either so yeah okay cool so I've got to shrink this edge just a little bit and give it that arc so make that so I've replicated the angle that's on the inside there I'm assuming it's a heat shield or something like that but um, I've got that made and I'll transfer those little reference holes that I drilled in it so that I can just transfer it straight to this so yeah there's that replicated I just noticed a slight little discrepancy where it's a bit um, low there so I'm going to bump that area up and then um, just by here so I'm just going to run the um, Z roller on that area and just bump it up alrighty so that's the angle replicated use the same reference holes so I know it's all exact and I fixed that little discrepancy there that was a bit low so happy days alrighty so inner is welded on the arch is welded on and I've got this last remainder which I'll put on um, after the quarter's been put on because I'd rather have access in there just in case so I'll put that on last okay so outer quarter is clamped on I've got this piece to add on just yet so I'll trim that back get that on there but all the inner lip and everything is all meeting up nice so I've got to trim the bottom side of it off and cut, cut it all in here and then I trim it down a bit on this uh, lip so I'll scribe that line along there and uh, showing it's got no crazy pressure or anything on there it's fitting good all right so quarters ready to go on for the last time so that's the quarter tacked on now so TIG tacked stitched the whole way along there and um, I've got a MIG weld here on my join and it'll be MIG plugs and I'll use my spot welder to go over the top for the cosmetic look I just haven't trusted it lately it's popped off on a few spots so now I just plug it and I just use a spot welder over the top um, this area here I might end up MIGging it I'll see I'll see how the TIG reacts the sealer and stuff that's on there you have to get it pretty much spotless so I'll see how it ends up on this bit alrighty so the TIG join is done and I MIGged this bit here so I've got this face is all welded now I've just got the plugs underneath so I've got all these plugs to do around the whole perimeter so with the weld I just use a wire brush and I get it to this point here and then it's knocked down with a 36 the roller and um, once I get it to about that point there I'll switch to an 80 so I'll put an 80 disc on there which is much finer and then I start hammering it up All right, so after the 80 on the roll lock you just get the hammer and dolly and dress up any areas you can feel and you get a block 
and you go along and it'll show you all your little lows that you've got to go along and pick up now so then you just progressively keep going give it another block give it a dress up wherever you wherever needed until you're happy with it so i just gave that a buzz with the 80 and prime will get any little imperfections that are there so i'm just going to do these plugs on the underside now so i buzzed all the um, plug welds off so i'm just going to use the spot welder now just to put the spots on to make it look factory over the mig welds so the spots are added for the factory look so next up we're going to do a uh, door skin so lower door skin and um, fix up the inner as well so the inner is rotted out so I've got to peel this back repair the inner and then I'll make a new skin for the outer yeah well this is just crossed under this whole thing so there's no point even trying to save it I'll just buzz the lip off and then I'll repair the inner so the easiest way just to remove skins if you don't care about them because it's just a rotted mess under there you just buzz along there till you see it change you see the little hairline split as soon as you see the split you know you're through you just lift, lift off no no trouble all right so that's removed and you can see it is uh, toast all the way through it's pretty much ready just to break so piss that off now I'm unsure if I'm going to join here where I can get access there I think I will I think I'll just run a piece come up and join along the bottom here reasoning behind that instead of trying to join on the flat here is that corner will be rotted from all the water sitting in that area so that's all just uh, rotted away so I've got to come up higher as to where no water has been to rot the material away so folded a piece on the press brake and uh, now just add these last little details on the corner it tapers down and changes the bead shape to like a 10 mil step instead of just a harsh fold Pretty sure it's like that both sides. Yeah, this one tapers up. So just doing this little cutout here and it steps up for the uh, center support of the door. So to add that, I've just got two bits of plate around my cutout. I'm just going to tap that area down and it should give me the bulge out I need. So yeah, to get that, it's got this sharp chisel. Put that on there, gave that a few taps, spin it around, do the other side and then just tap across. It gives me the bulge I need. Because we've added material here by bulging it here it wants to um give me a little bit of an arc so i'm going to take that and give it just a tiny little squish with the shrinker stretcher just to pull that excess material out of there and let it settle down all right so that's on there and i've uh, just cut down for the beads i didn't add the beads so there's no need to reinvent the wheel and recreate that shape when it's already there and not rotted so should be happy days i should be able to scribe this along there and then take off one mil to account for the overlap. So there we go. Yucky. The same deal as every time, just tig tucks every half inch or so, and uh, it's going to want to suck right in because there's nothing holding this here, so it just wants to fold in. And it is a little bit of a suck in shape factory. So I was like, oh, it doesn't seem flat, but yeah, it's actually, it's got like a secondary step there. So it does actually curve inwards, which is surprising. I would have definitely thought it would be flat. So this is where you've got to be the most strategic with your joins when you're tigging. You to make sure you can actually get in there with the hammer, which I can. You can get in there and swing, and fine. So it's got to uh, be careful that you don't trap yourself into a corner where you actually can't get into these areas because uh, yeah you can do yourself a lot of mischief all right so all welded so it welded really nice when my gap was tight and where I had a big one mil gap there it sucked in more because there's more heat required so it'll shrink more so you've got to keep your gaps nice and tight if you want less work for yourself so I'll wire wheel this off now and then um, dress it up a little bit and then buzz most of the weld off and plunge it up again and then hit it again with the 80 Okay, so all welded and sanded. There's a few little imperfections like here and in there, but it's the bottom of a door. I'm not going to go too crazy. So I flipped back over and I've got to decide how far up I want to do the skin. So it's a bit torn and cracked up near this body line anyway. There's a dent here, a dent here. 
few other little whacks. So I'm almost thinking just go right up to the body line, sort all that shit out at the same time. Because it makes no difference if you're joining here, here, or here, it's the exact same amount of welding, so you may as well make it nice. So these door skins are fairly simple really, there's only curvature this way, there's absolutely nothing side to side, so I've put it in the slip rollers, gained my curve that I need, clamped it to the door, scrubbed my lines, trimmed it back for the folds, so I'll put this bottom one in the press brakes, just long and easy to be straight, and then I'll uh, bead roll the sides. Okay, so flanges are turned, this one's just beyond 90 because it's flat and straight. These ones we bring to 90 because the door has to curve like this and if we fold that over there's too much material there and it will bow the opposite way to what we want the door to do. So we're going to shrink this edge so it pulls the material out of there and keeps the curvature we want. Alright so I've shrunk this edge with the kick shrinker. And seems to be fitting pretty good. Now I've got to tighten one of these edges up because obviously I'm overlapped. So I've got to tighten up one edge before it'll fit on. So I'll unpick this one now. So trim the top and uh, Mazda loved putting spot welds along their perimeters. And uh, yeah, just buzz the lip off so just ground it against until it fell off. I've just got these two spots holding the skin now and it should, um, should come off soon. So that's unpicked now, you can see where my join was yesterday. So I've got a little bit of weld to finish off here and a little join here to finish off so I'll sort that out but it's clean other than that so I'll uh, wire wheel all this up proper and give it a prime so I prime the inside edges of this where I'm not going to be able to get to again once they're hemmed over alright so just sitting in place now just slid over the top I've still got to tighten up this edge I've chosen the back edge to tighten up but um, yeah it just needs a bit of playing with here and there just a bit of damage to address on the actual door first a dent here as well so I'll get those sorted out beforehand. All the inside where the skin's going to fold over all cleaned up ready to prime. Alright so I just primed in those areas and underside of this skin in here obviously I primed it before I hemmed it over. Just gave it another dust over from where I've scratched it. While I wait for the primer to flash off and dry, I'm going to start unpicking this absolute mess. So I think my attack here is going to be unpick this section, take it off, repair it, and repair this area with that section out of the way, otherwise you've got to dig in there with like a crow pack method, and I'm not about that. So just drill out all the spot welds, where you can see, probably use your hand and check, double check for a little divot. Sometimes you can use sandpaper and just scuff it up. Sandpaper will show hidden spot welds. This area here is just going to be uh, pretty much pop these off and then see what's holding on there. So where you've got to be pretty gentle to not tear through and make a mess of when you've got to refit it because it's easy to um, destroy one if you don't need it but when you're refitting both of these you've got to be real gentle. Most of them will pop off pretty easy. If you have trouble, die grind a little more out of the hole. And it should come off pretty easy after that. What a mess. And it's a fine line between cut out and replace and repair what's there. Sometimes you can get lucky and do a few little relief slits of where it's really bunched up and stretched. There's just too much material there. So if you do a few reliefs and then hammer it back, sometimes it comes back. The any areas that are pretty much crushed over each other, I drill them out. And then uh, once I get all this area back down to where it should be, the, all the gaps sort of close up and you can dig them all up. But, and worst case, just cut that piece out and remake that section. But at least you can try and repair the original piece. Sometimes you get lucky. So just routinely check it before you do any welding or anything like that, just to make sure it's heading in the right direction. And uh, probably get started on this other piece now and then marry the two together. And, uh, same with the inner piece, we've got way too much material here, so I'll do a slit there and probably a slit here. And then I'll see where it all gathers to. Alright, so just sitting the guard back on the car now to make sure everything bolts up still. And then I use bolt in the uh, spot weld holes just to make sure it's all in the correct location, otherwise, it's out of whack 
you start welding shit on it's just it turns into a disaster so this area is pretty paper thin now so I'll probably end up remaking just this section here and it's uh, spread it its chaos a bit further over there and tore the edge and stuff here so a bit to address but I'm just going to sit the guard on there I've put the door skin on I want to fit the door check the gaps and then I'll start finalizing that so I've noticed a lot of damage on the guard in this area here where it's been smacked right in and I noticed where they, they smashed all the red support in as well and that was to get the guard to move back because they've elongated the hell out of this hole here just to try and get the guard back because the door gap was so bad so it still needs to come back further to get that hole central to where the hole originally was so um, I've got to pull this back off and just get this lip and sharpen it up a bit tighter there and then I'll probably have to re-drill the hole because there's so much stretched material here it's just not liking to go back where it was I've got to get the guard in the right spot with the door and get all the door gapped up good so that I can finish the um, bottom of the door skin and get that happy where it needs to be so just how much the hole's been elongated just to get it where it, where it would even be close to bolting on in its current damaged position so yeah i've got to get that to be central to close this gap right up so we can see just how elongated it is there and we want to get that back to being central to close this gap right up but it won't let the guard go back because when the rudder support was damaged and all pushed in it let the guard go back to where it needed to be but now that the rudder support is straightened it's held up and not letting it actually push back so i've got to get that lip and move that lip forwards so that metal stretched and then elongate that hole back to where it should be. I'm going to do that by putting the dolly against this lip a bit off and tap the lip forwards. Alrighty, so with some playing on that lip, didn't have to elongate any holes. Got it to all line up to knock that back. And then I had to trim this little lip here. It was hitting against the rad support, so I trimmed that back to let the guard go back. And trimmed this one here that was banging on the sealer. So we're now fitting where it should be. The gaps are big, but that's, that's how they are on these, unfortunately. And uh, fitting good everywhere else. So now I can continue on getting this edge shrunk where it needs to be, where it's all stretched and trying to splay the guard out this way. And the same with the front here, can tidy all this up and get it at least stitched in place so that we know we're in the right direction now and now that I know I'm happy with where the guard's sitting I'll play with the door a little bit more might lift the door up a smidge and uh, yeah get this door skin tacked on and as we can see the bottom of the guard is fitting 10 times better than the other side um, but the door skin needs to just clock a little bit to get that gap to be perfect and slide forward a smidge so that's the danger of trying to do a door skin off the car and then not checking it on the car because your gap can be tight big and then yeah, it's up to shit because the door is completely wrong for the car and you have to do monkey business to get it to all to fit and as a rule with these old clunkers it's one door doesn't fit the next car so you might get a mint door off another one and it just does not fit your shell because they pretty much were not fitting great at the factory so the, the panels that came off the car originally are going to fit best to that car and i found no matter how good the guard is and stuff that you buy that you put on it just does not fit nice sometimes to the next shell in comparison for the other guard it's so much bigger than the actual sill like it bellies right down i'm not sure if that's where it's been stretched heaps and then they've folded their own lip on it um, in the past but yeah the body gap's up to shit it's tight right on the line it's tight up the top like it's just not not great but yeah this one is really concerning the height difference between that and the sill so i'm gonna have to redo that lip i have to draw it on there where i want it with the level and um yeah just refold that that bottom because it's just not in the right spot at all Alrighty, so i got my door skin tacked and punished now ready to do a big zap along there um, you'll notice once you do little tacks along here that it will suck in and tighten right up and if it tightens up and you can't get your finger over it nice and flush then you've got to tap that weld and it will expand that weld back out and open your gap back up a bit. 
just makes me nervous this bit because the door looks good and then you weld it and it warps and turns to shit and you've got to slowly bring it back. Alright so welded, now I'm going to hit it with the wire wheel and then the uh, 36 on the roll lock and then the 80 on the roll lock depending on where it needs to be hit with the hammer and dolly. Alright so that's buzzed down with 80 on the roll lock, not happy with it in a few spots, it's pretty dented in so from the heat. So I'm going to get behind there with the hammer and dolly now and dress it all up. Alrighty, so I've got the door skin to about 80%. Just played with this gap. I've got the front to do, but I want to address the guard first. Mm -hmm. So I can get into all these areas still. The world's still fully accessible, so I'll play with this a bit more. But I've got to uh, flatten this edge just a touch more, but I can't do that with the door on. I've got to pull the door off. So I've got to play with this area here that's just giving me grief. There's a stud snapped off in the guard as well so I can't bolt it on properly yet so I'm going to rip the guard off and uh, tidy up all this area here give these a slice where it's all stretched from whatever mud flap and stuff it was there just take that back together so that it holds the guard in the right direction and uh, start playing with a few other areas here before I can move on to finalize the uh, front repair all right so I played with the back corner now it's all bolting on where it should be and I can continue with this repair so I can unbolt this inner section, finish welding all this up, and then uh, prime both back sides and spot it back on, and then address this um, mess here. There's a little few tears and stuff on there, but now the back's fitting good how it should be. And I've just got that little edge of the skin there to weld up, and uh, that corner there, once I get the um, door back off. Uh, the bolt sorted in the bottom of this now, so back to normal. And uh, that's it, just the two little splits that were in the wheel arch welded up there. The rest of it come good. The front is bent over and mangled, but depending on what wheels he runs, we might even run it forward, so I just won't touch that for now. Got a little bit of rust here in the inner skirt to do and a touch on the guard. So I'll sort that out. Now if I had to, I can continue ticking all these little slits up and dicking about but for the same amount of time you can just make a replacement section for there happy days same as the outer just make a replacement piece for it sometimes it's just so much quicker just to replace than it is to repair all right so that's the inner repaired patch on there so that's and i can do the outer now both faces are prepped for welter primer and this red oxide that Mazda uses, you think it's rust and then you buzz it off and it's not rust at all. Alrighty, so probably like 80% on the guard, just finalising the last of the welds of any area that needed to be built up. Oh yeah, that join's done. Up in there. Bloody earth coin. So yeah, there's a patch in there. And um, hopefully ready to buzz these off now and then join the pieces back together the uh, you know all right so that's just hit with the 80 on the roll lock it's probably the most um, economical re repair i can do for it so i'm going to buzz it with the 80 on the whizzer see if any uh, lows and shit pop up but uh still a lot of work there just did a little patch like that that's why i don't really like repairing hanging panels i feel like they're just such a uneconomical waste of time repair like it's so much better off buying mint panels because it's cheaper every time uh, ten nine times out of ten is cheaper to buy mint panels than it is to repair damaged panels all right so that's pretty much where i'm going to get it to it's the most economical repair i can do for this guard pretty decent view of the inside there so yeah patch and a weld along the um along the edge here where it was all creased in and all pushed inwards so pumped all this area back out and uh, should be pretty good now so I'm going to put this inner piece back on all right so test fit for this piece get that all bolted back in alrighty so bolted back together ready to do all these plugs along these areas so inside view not that you can see much I'm going to chuck it back on the car and I'm pretty sure there's a bit of resistance in this area here that I need to put in the kick shrinker because that hole, it just required a bit of force to pull it over to it. So I think that just needs to be shrunk a little bit, that lip where I've um, pulled it forward. So 
just got to do this rust patch here and uh, take the door off to fold the rest of the skin 100% in that section. Alright, so door back off, folded this uh, flange all the way 180, hemmed it over. So now I can hang the door back on the car. Always try and help yourself, put tape where your hinges were because it's such a nightmare when it's one person and you're trying to hang a door. So I found the easiest way I do it is I put, leave the door catch on, I clip the door in and I'll just lift this side up until my tape lines up and it should be in the right spot. The reason I've only buzzed just the sides with the 80 on the whizzer and not started doing this join is uh, I've run out of 80 whizzers on the round pads. I've only got squares that are meant for like the blocks and it's just destroying the edge of my sander so I'll wait until the whizzers arrive and then I'll continue on this. Alrighty so the guard is hung back on. I didn't end up having to do any shrinking there. It went into place. So it's all bolted on. There's a bit of playing with the edge up here to pull it out a smidge. Uh, other than that, fitting pretty decently. Now I will copy how this fold is for the other side because the other side is massive whereas this lines up nice and flush. The other side is a disaster. I don't even know what's happened there. So yeah, I'll mark this with the laser level and uh, get that all sorted. I hung the door on the guard on for the first time and uh, overall fitment is pretty bad. It needs to be played with everywhere and I'm having the bottom of the guard is bunched up here so it's, it's been stretched so I have to shrink the bottom lip of that to pull the guard back to straight and uh, I'm not sure how far the door actually overhangs the sill but it is pretty far. Pretty big gap as well but all the body lines are lining up so I think that's just how they are. I have to confirm on a few other cars. And that's uh, factory door and factory guard. No aftermarket panels and look at the it. it goes big skinny, big skinny. The guard's all over the shop with the gap. Whereas the back gap's pretty large, so I'll probably cheek it back a fair bit. But yeah, it even kicks out bigger here, so definitely weren't the greatest fitting, the old Mazdas. I thought the gap was a little tight there, the door's got to go back a bit. So this door's got to come off because I thought it was good, but a uh, typical buy a door and then think it's alright, but it's uh, pitted everywhere. And then on the inside it's really bad. So same as the other side, the inner and the outer, which is unfortunate. So yeah, thanks for watching. Next video will be the rear spoiler, the passenger inner door skin and the front spoiler various little repairs in the engine bay like the battery tray repair and a little horn bracket and stuff so i'll post that up next week